Hi, I'm uh, Nick DeCesar, and uh, Byron and I, just a little background, we're both PhD students, Byron with, uh, with Marco at University of Calgary, and me with uh, Hebelite at the University of Montana. We're both trying to wrap up this spring, and uh, I'm kind of here to represent Mark, so who, Hebelite, who is in Borneo, um, really wanted to be here. And for those of you who know him, you know, maybe would appreciate that he sent one note. He's been doing some field work in Borneo, and apparently he's a He's a real uh, jungle leech magnet, I think, is what the way he said. So, um, so my work um, with Hebelite has been more in sort of, so Byron's been doing a lot of um, population genetics, and my work has been more in sort of spatial ecology and population dynamics. And I'm just going to give sort of a, an outline of some of the preliminary results, some of the work that I've um, got done so far. And, and a little bit light on methods and more just sort of give you a, a basic gist here. So um, the sort of spatial approach to um, caribou ecology that I've been taking is basically starting with sort of this acknowledgement that there are many features that they're responding to that um, across landscapes. And so basically, how can we um, assess the response of of both caribou and their predators to sort of variation in space. And so the first two things that I've been doing are working on are um, assessing how caribou resource selection varies with, with um, changes in landscape variation and also how that of their um, predators change. So looking at both resource selection and predation risk with respect to spatial variation. But map that accounts for sort of selection across all three scales would look like if you wanted to predict uh, you know caribou habitat suitability or whatever um, presence absence using these techniques so so that's sort of the resource selection um, angle and, I, and the, that work is in, in revision right now and so my next step has been to work on predation rate so in the same study area we've been I should have said the the um, caribou data was, was collected by many partners that were listed on that title slide, um, about two, over 200, I think, individual GPS collared caribou. And so now we're working with um, GPS collared wolf data in the same study area and looking at both resource selections or sort of where are wolves and where aren't they, but also um, specifically kind of a, the mechanism of predation. So well, the way that I de describe it, these are search rate and efficiency rate. So if this is a given wolf hunting path, you know, through an area, the search rate would be sort of where is it hunting versus where isn't it, which is basically the same thing that I did for caribou, sort of what, what is wolf habitat. But then the, the sort of within that, the efficiency rate would be um, where is it actually making its kills compared to where is it hunting. So it's um, sort of looking at controlling for where they're, where they're hunting, um, what's driving where they actually kill prey. And we can use GPS collars really well to predict um, kill sites. So we've been doing lots of that. And um, I guess I'll start just with this panel on the left, this blue panel. And, and we've done lots of modeling of wolf habitat. And we know pretty well what wolves do. Um, and generally, they, they, they like to hunt in valley bottoms. They can, they can um, in cases, pr preferentially hunt in forest openings. And generally, there's lots of relation or data across a lot of um, study areas that wolves will will um, select for linear features when hunting. So size of clients, a couple of, or size of clients or roads. And those relationships were all supported with, with our data. So we made a, a predictive model of where wolves hunt that included um, sort of a, t a strong effect of topography of um, land cover and then of, of anthropogenic features. But once we control for that, and again, this was a resource selection modeling, but with, when, we, when we controlled for that and then looked at um, predation efficiency, or sort of given where they're hunting, what's affecting the probability of them making a kill with space and time, and we used um, proportional hazards modeling for this, um, some of the other stuff starts to fall out. And really the, the most consistent, and really the only consistent predictor of where wolves are actually making kills given where they're hunting is, um, is sort of tight drainages. So sort of in the valley bottoms and tight drainages, um, there's a higher probability of a wolf making a kill given that it's already hunting there. So when you combine those two things together, then you have sort of the complete prediction of what predation risk really is. Not just where wolves go, which is important, but also 
where they actually kill things once they're there, that sort of thing. Um, and, the, and this predation efficiency um, thing does, it, when you scale it back to sort of per pack, how much um, predicted efficiency are you actually seeing compared to how many kills are they actually making, there is a nice relationship that these hazard models can, can get scale up to sort of kill rates per pack um, at a broader scale. So the ultimate question, though, really, is how do these two things combine to affect um, caribou survival and demography? And this is sort of still in progress. Um, the, we have sort of done some preliminary work just to, to, to build um, sort of our methods up and how we're going to um, assess uh, population growth rates um, using this adult female survival data and, and calf cow recruitment data. And then there are some adjustments you can do to those calf cow surveys that then allow you to do um, population viability analyses, which is um, we did a sample um, sort of PVA analysis for some of the parks herds and um, using these same types of demographic data. And our goal is basically to take uh, this sort of approach across our, our entire study area and, and, and while accounting for uh, spatial variability in, in both selection and, and predation risk. So that's sort of the, the quick and dirty outline of, of my work.